want you to tell them that if episode two is not a lot better than episode one, there's not going to be an episode three. He said the show needs to be a lot more educational. He actually called our first episode muddled and incomprehensible. It made me a bit reporter. I don't have a book in these big wings. Mr. Porter and I go way back, and he'll listen to me. Okay, Jerry, but when you talk to him, you might as well tell him that this is the show, and we are not changing it. That's what I've been trying to tell you this whole time, man. It's the Magna Carta, dude. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> right, got that. Hey, dudes. Have you guys seen Nick? Uh, I think he's with Alexa in the editing room. Thank you. Have you seen? Train set. Oh, train set, got it. Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, Jerry, how you doing? Have you ever actually stopped and looked at this thing? I mean, I must walk past here like 50 times since we started working for this studio, but I've never really stopped and looked at this. I mean, this is sick. You know what? I never did really look at this stuff, and it's really cool. You know, look you know, at all these details. I know, right? I actually had one of these things when I was a little kid. I mean, not as crazy as this, but I can remember putting yeah. the tracks together with my dad when I was like five. That's pretty really cool. Listen, I think I've solved our little problem with a certain studio president who thinks certain way that TV show needs to be more educational. What? You met with Porter already? Well... And did you tell him that we're not changing the show? Did you tell him that there's something called artistic integrity? Did you tell him that we do not need his input on our very successful and groundbreaking and extraordinary TV show? Did you tell him that? Did you? Yes, Nick. I told the studio president who signs all our checks that we do not need his input. And what did he say? Well, um, he said that we need to add a segment with the kids and kids asking you a question about the law. Kids? Mm -hmm. Asking me questions about the law. Cute little kids, you know, it could be good. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what's wrong with that. This is not Nickelodeon, jury, okay? That's what's wrong with that. This is not Romper Room that we're making here, okay? This is a serious television show. Serious? You got Jared riding in on a surfboard with wheels. I was gonna change the surfboard to something else. Look, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this. But this is not a suggestion, this is an order. He said, do a segment with kids or the show is canceled. Canceled. That was his exact word. He said the word canceled. All right, you know what? Fine. Porter wants a segment with kids? Okay. I'll give him a segment with kids. My way. Welcome back to another fun and educational episode of Legalese with attorney Nick Gordon and Jerry Love. Our main course is information about the American legal system and your choice of side dishes will be laughter, comedy, and jokes. Except in this restaurant, if you eat too many side dishes, the executive chef comes out and cancels your show. 
Joshi no seida, amoi dori no shouka tekinai. Well, let's get right into the most educational segments. It's the game we like to call Julie's Prudence Password. Attorney Gordon, why don't you tell the folks at home how the game is played? It's simple, Jury. Our contestants have to guess each jurisprudence password based on clues given to them by an actual attorney from right here in Foxborough, Massachusetts. And that attorney will be none other than Candace Wexler. Come on down, Attorney Wexler. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. My pleasure. Jury, I'm a huge fan of this. I am a super fan. Uh, listen, if you ever want to talk representation, give me a call and we can work out a nice five to ten year plan for your career. Have you gone to Luciano's yet? Oh my god, the best salmon aragosta in the state. You know what, Candace? let's, uh, you can talk to her after the show maybe because we got a lot to get to. Okay, we're going to need some contestants for this game show this week as always. Let's see. Actually, you know what? I always choose the contestants. Why don't you pick the contestants this time? Nikki always did a great job. Remember the guy, like Russian guy? <laughs> yeah, I remember that Russian guy. It was awesome. You're right. I'm, I'm on kind of like a hot streak with picking good people. Uh, okay. Let's see. Who would like to be on this game show? Yes! You, miss. Right there with the cowboy hat. Come on up, please. And we'll need one more. Anybody? Okay. You in the back. Come on up. All right. Come down here and... Meet and greet our brave contestants. What is your name, miss? I'm Lisa Hardenberg, and I'm a senior at the University of Texas. Hook em horns! Woo! God help us. And you, sir, what's your name? Oh, hey. My name is uh, Maximus Sandimas, and I just want to say that it is most excellent to be here with the bodacious Jerry Love and the Mondo Litigious Attorney Gordon. Well, thank you very much for that compliment. So, let's see, um, I guess I'll leave it to you, Attorney Wexler, which one do you want to start with? I'll go with the Texan. All right, mm -hmm. let's get set up. Please put 30 seconds on the clock. Whichever contestant comes up with the most correct jurisprudence passwords in 30 seconds will be our winner. And the first category we're going to start with will be family law. Okay. And begin. When husband and wife are having issues, they file for divorce. Sometimes the parties argue over the division of these assets. The parties and their lawyers are required to meet and talk about the case. This meeting is called a four way. Ching, ching. If a husband or wife disobeys a court order, they can be found in contempt. Oh, yes. This is oh, when yes. a mom and dad work together and cooperate to raise their children even though they are divorced. Co parenting. And that's it. Wow, you got every single one of them right. That is amazing. Fantastic job. All right, we're going to switch up our contestants and come right back. Let's reset our clock to 30 seconds, please. And... Attorney Gordon, can I just say one thing before we start? Why not, Maximus? <laughs> All right. I just want to say it has been most excellent to team up with you on this most bodacious assignment, your Esquireness. Thank you very much. Uh, your category for now is going to be English common law terms. Begin. This is often called the glue that binds a contract together. Uh, Elmer's. This is communication to a judge about a case when one side is not there to hear what's going on. A uh, gossip. This is the person who promises to pay a debt for someone else. My stepdad, <laughs> probably. <laughs> this is what we call false and defamatory statements when they are put in writing. Oh yeah, totally. Like they do this on Twitter all the time. It's called trolling. This is the royal decree of rights agreed to by King John of England in the year 1250. Oh, that's easy. It's the Magna Carta, dude. That, that's actually right. That's right. You got one right. I got right. Good job, Maximus. <laughs> I feel good about that one. That was good, right? It's funny, you know, people learn something, I guess. Nick. Yes. You don't look like yourself today. Of course I look like myself. Who else am I going to look like? Come on. Why don't you let me do the kids segment, you know, and you, I will do mine. You do the kid? No, 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 no. The kids segment is my segment. I appreciate the kind offer, but believe it or not, I'm actually looking forward to this one. 
If Porter wants Pee Wee's Playhouse, I'm going to give him what he wants, and I'm going to enjoy doing it. In fact, speak of the devil, I think, is that what I think it might be there? Yeah, Alexa? I know that you wanted red, but they only had light blue. Oh, that's fine. No, no, he wears light blue all the time. What's it's all beautiful. this stuff? You'll see. You will see. Uh, oh, and someone named Jamie Lynn Siegler is on Zoom right now. She says she's a friend of yours. Jamie Lynn? Wait a minute. Are you telling me that you don't know who Jamie Lynn Siegler is? Jamie Lynn Siegler, Meadow Soprano. Tony Soprano's daughter. The, the, the Sopranos, it's, it's only the, the most popular show in the history of HBO. I don't watch HBO. Jesus. God save us. Which laptop do I need to get on to talk to my friend Jamie Lynn? I have this one right here. Okie dokie. That'll be all. Thank you. Yep. <sighs> oh. Hey, Nick. It's Jamie Lynn Sigler here. Jamie Lynn! Baby! How you doing? Um, I hope you're well. Well, you know, I'm hanging in there. So, <clears throat> Jared has been telling me about Mr. Porter and him limiting your creativity and um, just your feelings about it and you're wanting to quit, and I totally get it. Yeah, you know, I'm sure he's not a bad guy and he's probably, like, really good at his job and everything and all the technical aspects of the other side of this business, but I need creative freedom. You know what I'm saying? I need I need the freedom to to make the kind of show that I want to make. Otherwise, what are, we, what are we even doing here every week, right? Look, as creatives, we have not chosen the easy path. Um, <clears throat> but it's worth it when it works. So if there's a way for you to figure out how to channel your creativity in something else on the side, or if not, stand up for yourself and figure out what's right. Something else on the side? Wait, please tell me you don't know something that I don't know. If you did know something I didn't know, you would tell me what you know so we would both know about it, right? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of freaking out a little bit here. Last week, the guy threatened to cancel the whole show. You only have one life. There's no reason to feel stifled or stuck in any situation, especially in the arts. Um, so friend, just keep pushing through, keep finding things that keep you inspired and happy. Hey, what about this? What about this? Hear me out. I write something for you for legalese and we fly you in. And uh, I know you're in LA right now shooting that Netflix docudrama, but we'll work around your schedule, everything on my dime, and you come on this show. Um... Uh, you know what? Don't answer now. Don't answer now. Sleep on it. Tell you what, we'll, we'll put a pin in it and uh, we'll come back to it. It's probably a good idea, though. I hope to possibly be part of something you write one day. Maybe on legalese, huh? Think about it. Just, all I'm saying, just think about it. It's probably a pretty cool idea. Later. Ciao. Are you excited? Yes, really excited. Nervous? Yes. Oh, do you have the questions ready? Do you know what you're going to say? Yes. Ooh, do you have a lot of questions? Yes. How many questions do you have? 49. Oh my goodness. Hi guys, Lillian, we're ready for you. If you want to come in. Right this way. Come on in. So Sterling, I'm thinking right right here is a good spot for you to, to oh, hang out okay. and you can you can watch. Good luck. Lillian, come on this way. Don't trip on the cables, come right through. We're gonna have you sit right here. We're gonna get you set up with a microphone here. It would be really yeah. weird. <laughs> well, hello, boys and girls. This is the time on our show when we would usually do our most popular segment, which is called, Is That Legal? But that segment's been cut out for reasons that are outside of my creative control. So instead, I'll be answering legal questions posed to me by children. What, what in God's name is Nick wearing? Um, well, he's Mr. Rogers. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go call my agent because I'm gonna need a new job. But, but it's cool. Mm, yeah. Mm. But. 
And we have a very special child here with us today, don't we? Please welcome Lillian. Thanks for being on our show today, Lillian. Hi, Attorney Gordon. How are you? Hi. Now, I know you came prepared with a bunch of different legal questions today, didn't you? I'll bet you have questions about the law of rainbows and the legal rights of Disney princesses, don't you? Actually, I was wondering why do judges wear black robes? That's actually a really good question, Lillian. Some people think it's symbolic of our justice system. Like, if every single judge wears the same exact plain black robe, then we can expect the same fairness every time we walk into a courtroom, no matter who the judge is. But I saw in the news that people are treated differently by the color of their skin. Is that true? Wow, that's another really good question, Lillian. That's silly. Who cares about skin color? Like in the summer, I get a tan. So does that make me a different person? You are absolutely right, Lillian. Of course it doesn't make you different when you get a tan. It is very, very silly to judge a person by the color of their skin. You're right. Hey, I brought something with me here today to show you. Do you want to see something really cool? Yes, sure. All right. Look at this. Do you know who this person is? Her name is Lady Justice. And take a look at what she's got cover, covering her eyes. Do you know what we call that? A blindfold? Yes, very good, Lillian. It's a blindfold. The reason she wears a blindfold is because Lady Justice does not care at all about what a person looks like on the outside. She certainly doesn't care about what a person's skin color might be. And I think we all agree that's how our justice system should be. We even have a saying, justice is blind. And that's where that saying comes from. Unfortunately, though, Lillian, you're right. Sometimes people forget that no matter what color a person's skin is or what a person looks like on the outside, we're all the same on the inside. And that's what's most important. Hey, maybe people will be reminded of that if they watch this show today. What do you think? Yes, I hope they watch this show. I hope so too, Lillian. Wow, Lillian's so smart. She's doing such a great job. My husband and I have been so happy to have her with us the last four months. Yeah, she's doing a great job. I, I think I heard that you were a foster mom. Yes, we've had Lillian with us and, you know, the poor kid has been through so much. Her dad died in Afghanistan wow. and her mom died four years ago in a small plane crash. It was all over the news that after spread on Monday was on it. And um, it's just been tragic. Wow, what a story. Mm -hmm. Yes, another question? What is it? Um, I have another legal question about something I saw on Netflix. Netflix? That's really cool. What's your question? Um, well, there's this movie on Netflix where this girl has some foster parents and she gets a piece of paper from the judge and the piece of paper says that she can live with their parents forever and they can like have their last name. Is that true or just on TV? You know what? That's 100% real and true. I've seen that happen with my own eyes in courtrooms and it is really cool to see that. That's awesome. Do you think you can ask the judge to get me one of those papers? Why would you need one of those papers, Lily? Well, I live with my foster parents, and I love them so much, and I really want to stay with them forever. You know what, guys? Um, let's take a 10-minute break. Is that okay? Can we just take 10? I want to talk to my new little friend here. For All right. Me. Take 10. So you have some pretty cool foster parents, huh? Yeah, I'm really lucky. You are very lucky. It's true. I really hope I can stay with you forever. I hope so too. Hey, have you ever been on a real train? Yeah, in Boston. Oh, that's cool. You know what I like about trains? People get on the train sometimes, people get off the train sometimes. Sometimes, people stay on the train with us, sitting right next to us until the very last stop, right? But other times, they get off before we do, and we have to keep on going to our destination. You know what I mean? 
Well, I'll tell you what. If it turns out that your foster parents decide to fill out one of those papers that says you get their same last name and they become your parents forever, not only will I help them file all the paperwork with the court, but I'll also go to court and stand right next to you guys and talk to the judge because that would really be an honor for me to do that. Does that sound like a good plan? Yes! All right, you can count on it. Hey, look, it's a school bus, too. What's a school bus doing here at train stop on?